we had like a hundred people pay. Like we didn't even have a buy link. Like he just said, if you want to PayPal X dollars to my PayPal email address. And we had like a hundred people that day. And here we are in Bali, which the cost of living there is ridiculously low. Uh, especially when you earn US dollars. We were just like, oh my goodness, what did we just drop into? This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? Welcome back to another episode. It's your favorite person in the whole wide world, Onyx Singhal, back today with a really cool story. And this is one I got to tell you personally, I have been wanting to get into the middle of. Uh, I'll tell you my personal story with the company and with the person that we're talking to today. We're going to talk today about how to become an industry dominating company in a matter of just a few years, especially in the online education, certification, training area. This is going to be a very powerful interview because you could take whatever we talk about today into pretty much any niche. And today, what I've done is we've got a very special guest. And she's not the person you typically see as the face of this company, right? but she's the one actually running the company, the real boss. So we went and got the real boss behind the scenes uh, to come tell us what's really going on behind the scenes and everything. But before we get into this powerful interview, which I'm telling you all of you need to watch, learn.com, are you a member? L-U-R-N.com. We're in the middle of creating a movement of entrepreneurs here. There's no time better than now that we as a world rely and lean and need entrepreneurs. We're the ones who are going to change the world, save the world, not the government. So what have I done? L-U-R-N.com. We've built an entire platform. We have 380,000 members now. We're climbing our way up to 10 million. We are going to be the home for entrepreneurs where we all come, connect, facilitate relationships, and we empower one another to grow our businesses worldwide. So it's free to join. Go to L-U-R-N.com. Make sure that happens now. Also, last bit, every week now, if you leave me a review on iTunes for my podcast, or if you go subscribe at all the various platforms we have, you can find out about that by going to Anik, A-N-I-K, podcast.com. I pick winners every week from those who have left reviews for cool stuff, cash prizes, learn gear, and even maybe a call with me, private. So please do support the podcast. Go leave us a great review and do whatever you can to tell other people about it. All right, now that I've got all the promo stuff out of the way, let's talk domination. That's the theme of today's episode. I have with me Shauna Brooke. Now, let me tell you a little background story about her because you guys know I don't really like to do the whole read their, their rap sheet. I just like to tell my, my personal side of how I know people. So years ago, uh, about 2016 is when I started doing a lot of advertising and media buying, right? And I had to learn it myself. There really wasn't that much out there that I could trust. But around 2017 or so, I start to hear inklings of this person by the name of Justin Brooke. And I'm seeing his posts on Facebook and I'm seeing other people talk about it. And he's teaching advertising. And initially, of course, I had the same reaction. I was like, oh, who's this guy? I don't, I, don't, I don't know who this person is. Why should I trust this person with the hundreds of thousands of dollars a month I'm going to be spending on media buying? But slowly, I, you know, you see the escalation, like see Justin in one place and then you see Justin in two places and you see Justin in five places and you see Justin in 16 places. You're like, okay, what am I missing? Um, then Justin runs a Black Friday sale. I still remember where I was. I was actually in Redding, California, all right? And I'm, 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 in this, I'm in my hotel and I get an email from him and he's running this crazy Black Friday deal. Now, listen, I'm not short of money, but this is a lesson. It still got my attention. I went in and I bought his program. And at that point, I started an interesting relationship with him. So I just started messaging him on Facebook, asking some questions, and we started chatting back and forth. <clears throat> now some confessions. A, I bought the course, never ever logged in and took it. That's uh, guilty as charged. Um, but I do remember at this point getting very intrigued by, by him, by his company. And then just months later, I end up in Texas, and I, I don't know how the heck I found myself in this situation, but I am the student. And now I've got a whole panel of people that are going to basically grill me and teach me about media buying. Guess who's on that panel? That's right, Justin. So now I get a chance to meet him face to face. Long story short, the next morning after the panel's over, uh, we go out for breakfast tacos, which is something I've never done before. And that is where I also met his wife, 
Shauna Brook, who is our guest today. And we had an awesome conversation about media buying, about just all kinds of random stuff while eating tacos in the morning. I just, it was, I've never done that. It's the most random thing I've ever done. A um, lot of fun. And from there on, I've been so tuned into watching Ad Skills. This is the company's name and what they've done. And at this point, I'll tell you what happened recently. And Shauna, this is what led me to really wanting to interview you. I made a post on my Facebook, personal Facebook page. I do this all the time. I find my Facebook friends are a wealth of knowledge for me. I made this post. And I said, hey, I am looking for a media buyer to hire at Learn. I'm looking for someone who can come in and help us with our advertising. Who do you recommend? And of course, I already knew about ad skills. I had already reached out to you. I had already submitted the form. But I got so annoyed because everyone's like, Justin, Justin, Shauna, Justin, Justin, ad skills. I'm like, I know. Give me something else, please. Like some other resource also. I'm trying to, trying to attack this. But I really sat back and I felt humbled on your behalf. I was like, man, like they're just a de facto now in this industry. Like there is no one else. Like if you want to learn about advertising or want to hire an advertiser, like everyone just says, go to ad skills. And that made me think we got to get, you know, first I thought we got to get Justin on and I was like, eh, we got to get Shauna on. And we're going to talk about what's happening behind the scenes. So, Shauna, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you guys have just done some amazing killer stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can reverse dissect all of it today um, as much of it possible. But, yes, thanks so much for being here, Shauna. Thank you for having me. This is pretty awesome. I, uh, like I said earlier, I, I'm not normally the one that gets the request. So, it's, it's pretty cool to share and, you know, creep out from behind the scenes and just share a little of what I do in the business. And um, I hope to help somebody. Yeah, of course. And you will. And then you'll kill it. And then you'll show Justin and he'll be embarrassed because you know, <laughs> he, he, he does so many, but uh, here you are killing it. So it's awesome. Uh, do, do tell Justin I said hello, by the way. Um, so, so Shauna, let's, let's, uh, we, have a little, we have a little tradition here at The Fighting Entrepreneur. Um, so if you could just raise your right hand and repeat after me. <laughs> I, Shauna Brooke. I, Shauna Brooke. Do solemnly swear. Do you solemnly swear. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And reveal all of my ad skills secrets. I'll reveal all of my ad skills secrets. Thank you. Awesome. Perfect. I love watching our guests. Every time I start this, they get like, where is this going? Where are we going with this? Um, no, I have nothing to hide. I'm happy to share. Anything to help. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, Shauna, let's, let's dive right into round number one. It's rare that I do stories on this podcast. Everyone knows that. But this is, this is a situation in which I kind of want to hear actual story. So round number one is, can you tell me about the, uh, I don't know, just tell me the story of ad skills. How the heck have you guys gone? When, okay, let me ask this. When did you officially start? Because I actually couldn't figure that out. That's actually a great question. So um, officially, we became ad skills in 2018. But before that, we were called DMBI Online, which is a mouthful and sort of goes to how we, how we started the business. Um, but that's probably why you can't find out when is because you know, we sort of rolled having our own agency into having a course, into having a school, into, ha into rebranding into what is now ad skills. And it was just an evolution over the course of 2016 to the end of 2017, um, where, where you probably started to hear more and more because we just refined as we, as we ran into challenges or as we just realized like that's not the direction we need to go. So I think 2017 is probably when I really definitely started to hear. So we'll just say 2017 is kind of when you started to take shape as an education company. As a um, school. You know, as a school, as, as, a, as ad skills. And so we're sitting here, you know, not even mid-2020. And so we're talking three years. You went from someone like me who's been in the industry for 16 years asking Justin who to now getting annoyed because I can't find any other resource than Justin. And that that is... That's something amazing. So what happened during this time? Tell us just the full story, the good, the bad. I'd, I'd love to hear it. I'll, I'll do my best to wrap it into something short that won't take the full hour, right? <laughs> um, so 2015, uh, I would say 2012, 2015, Justin and I ran a media buying agency. Like we just, we started doing uh, traffic for Rich Sheffrin, which led to traffic for Russell Brunson, which led to traffic. And it, it just opened up more doors to run traffic for people in the online marketing space, which then opened us up to greater doors outside of the online marketing space where we could branch out and specialize in other sub niches, or I, I wouldn't even say sub niches. I would say bigger niches completely outside of just online marketing um, and internet business. And so that agency started to grow and grow and grow and we were getting killer results, but we were working like 
16 hour days, right? Because it was just yeah. Justin and I running an agency. And in that, like we sort of fell into the agency too. Like we just started working for Rich um, who was helping us out at the time, just like trying to figure out like the next step in our online evolution of working from home. And more and more people asked us to do ads for them. And, you know, we're not in the habit of turning down opportunities. So we would take them, but then like we had so much growth in that process and we just struggled, but we were still delivering results in the ad buying space. Right. And so a lot of people were coming to us and like, how are you doing that? Well, to shortcut and skip ahead a little bit, we, we ended up closing the agency because we were just working too many hours. We really like, we crossed that miracle, magical seven figure mark that you want to make from home. And we we're like, wow, our business is so great. But like we were miserable as people in the business because we were just working all the time. And so we decided like, Hey, if we just kept two clients, we could sell everything we own, hit the road and just sort of figure out where we want to go from here. That makes us happy. Um, and so literally we sold, you know, six fed, we got rid of our six bedroom house in Florida and we, we hit the road. We traveled all over for four years. And in that process, we sort of started to define like, what would, what would awesome look like to us? Like what would an awesome internet business look like and how could we build it? And so we just started from there. Um, so in that process, we kept our two clients, traveled around and just delivered on those clients, still sharing tidbits with people like hosting webinars on like how we were getting results with Facebook and how are we getting results with Twitter. And then eventually the demand came for us to create a course. Like we could just tell the audience was requesting it. People were actually asking us to speak on stages and to train sort of like you, like to train their team. And we were like, well, if we just create a course, we would do so much better. And so when we're in Bali, we have our cell phones. Um, we have a, I think we have just like a regular camera with us and a selfie stick. And literally we had to duct tape the, the, the nice camera to the selfie stick, hold it in front of us. And that's how we taught our first course. Like, to rewatch those videos is just bonkers, but we outlined like everything we had done to grow our agency and get results for our clients. And we just turned it into our first course and we launched it while we were in Bali on a selfie stick with a duct tape camera to it. Right. <laughs> you just start that's with so, what you have. That's so crazy. So we launched the course. We just, Justin just posted on social, like, Hey guys, I'm putting together a course. If you're interested, I'll drop it into just a private group. I'm only going to put a couple hundred people. I'm only going to put a few people in there because I really don't want to launch anything that's not going to get results. And we had like a hundred people pay. Like we didn't even have a buy link. Like he just said, if you want to PayPal X dollars to my PayPal email address. And we had like a hundred people that day. And here we are in Bali, which the cost of living there is ridiculously low. Uh, especially when you earn US dollars. So we were just like, oh my goodness, what did we just drop into, right? And everyone that joined that group, which is now our pro league, uh, it just has evolved from that, it joined, got phenomenal results, said it was such a great course. And, and that's sort of about the time, like, like you said, there wasn't really great education. And the problem with that is like the reason that was is because media buyers don't really like to share what's working, right? Like, cause if it's working, then they have to make their costs more expensive if they tell you about it, because now we're competing for those clicks, which then increases the, the demand and increases your cost. So media buyers like bulk, I mean, at scale that are sending millions of dollars of media buyers, they don't really like to share those details because again, it increases their clock costs. And so when we released the course, we actually had other media buyers mad at us for sharing so much of what we were doing. And we had to decide like, well, are we going to piss off, make, make people mad at us for like a handful of people? Or are we going to really start helping other people define this industry? Right. And so that's what we did. We just decided like, this is the route we want to go. We want to help people be able to have an ad buyer in their on their team that knows what they're doing and gets great results across all networks. Right that's media buying masters the first course we launched that did so well that we started um dmbi online we actually modeled it after awai online which if you know is an agora company they harvest writers out of that training and we know that agora needs writers and ad buyers and so we were like hey well we'll just build the other the opposite version of that and sell it to them and so that we sort of set started down that path as DMBI online, which is how we got that name, but they had no interest in that whatsoever. So if you're going to start a business, make sure your exit routine is actually plausible. That's the first tip, right? 
<laughs> and so when we saw that there really wasn't any interest, we were just, well, what do we want to do now? Like, do we want to continue down this path or do we want to stop and start over again? But we had such a great community happening with that first course that we decided to keep going. And then just to start specializing, like now that we had the foundational program that taught you you know, how to fix failing campaigns, how to read micro versus macro conversions. That way you can tweak your campaign to improve. Like now that we had taught like the foundational elements, how do we teach them to apply it to specific networks? And that's probably about the time you started to hear about us because we started doing more advanced marketing tactics in every network instead of just teaching, here's how to set up a Facebook ad campaign. Um, and that would say, I would say that was the end of 2017. And that's when at the end of 2017, we got John, who was a, a secondary instructor, right? He's a Google, he's from Google, like he was a Google ad buyer. And he didn't want to continue working for Google. So he came and partnered with us for a while to be an instructor and created all of our courses, which then helped Justin not be the only person creating courses, right? So we could scale a little bit better. That's that fire sale you saw. Um, that was a saving grace for us in the, the growth of ad skills, which gave us a boost to sort of um, launch, relaunch in 2018 as ad skills. And so that's how ad skills was born. The very long winded, but no, it was, it. Hey, it was a powerful story. And what happened is you kind of dipped into round number two already. So I've got better questions for round number two. Awesome. I, I want to highlight some parts of your story that I want our listeners to really capture. Um, and that really resonated with me because there's some parallels, not just between your story and my story, but I see this parallel between a lot of entrepreneurs who are very successful. So I laughed at when you said you duct taped a camera onto a selfie stick and filmed a course. There is something to be said about business coming out of organic demand that yeah. cannot be unmatched. And so when your audience is just asking for something, it's, so, it's just so easy to lean into that. Now, you have to have an audience in order for them to be asking for something. And what I have noticed is Justin has built an audience out of his personal Facebook page. He's yeah. been very good for years now, just posting stuff on his personal Facebook page. And we have had multiple guests at this point on this podcast that have told us again and again, personal Facebook page. It's a gold mine if you use it right. Mike Bontempo, uh, Akbar Sheikh, just, just recently I did an interview with him and he's built an entire seven-figure business off of just his personal Facebook page. Mike Bontempo built an entire advertising agency just off of his personal Facebook page. And I went and tested it and did webinar con. We put 120 of the top world's top marketers in one room, got them to fly, paid thousands of dollars with no ad spend, just our personal Facebook page. So for people that are thinking, gosh, how do I do this? How do I get traffic? How do personal Facebook page? You've already got the inklings of what you need. And how do you build an audience? Well, you start posting relevant content. How did I hear about Justin? Once he posted enough things on his personal Facebook page about advertising, I found my way to him somehow. So I'm tagging somewhere, somehow. I found my way because I'm interested in that. And Facebook, they've got some really skilled mathematician, voodoo, crazy people that build algorithms that read our minds and take us to the places that we want to go. So, but here's a couple parts of the story. One, uh, you, that course you filmed, you didn't wait for perfection. You didn't raise money for a studio. You just went and hustled and did it. I have a funny story. I was down and out. My company was, you know, I was 1.7 million in debt. Everything was falling apart. And I was getting a demand from my list as well. And I wanted to be in the personal development space. And so I filmed a course called Future of Wealth uh, in India. I used to go back and forth between India and the US and I filmed it on three flip cams. This is before the days when our phones could do such flip good camera cam, work. Right. Flip cams. And I filmed it myself. It was, I went back and looked at the videos and I want to throw up. They're so badly done. It was one of the most popular courses I've ever done. Students loved it. And um, I, I, there's a funny side story. I would film it in my apartment and um, one time someone walked in to the apartment. And so I would film with only the top, you know, right. you know, professional on top party on the bottom. So <laughs> wearing, wearing my, you know, just shorts, but I was just, I just did what needed to be done. I didn't have a budget to hire a big AV team or whatever. And that course went on to sell about $4 million worth of product. Right. I mean, it was huge filmed on a flip cam. So I want everyone to really resonate with this part of the story of notice how they, the market was always ahead of them. And they were trying to catch it. And they're like, oh, okay, what do people want? Oh, the people want this. And I love the story of Justin's like, hey, man, PayPal me some money. And, you know, 
Well, you just want to make sure, like, if you if you go all in on a product, a lot of people don't wait, don't do enough research to know that people are actually going to buy the product. Yeah. And so what we did is we said, hey, if you want to hear more about this, this is sort of the outline of the course we're we're planning to build. If you want, if you want this, just PayPal this money, and that will show us we should go build it. Um, and literally, like, with the hundred people that signed up, we 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 sent, spent that whole weekend in Bali. Like in the video, which is so funny that you say that in the video, like we personally edited ourselves on our phone. Like we uploaded it into the you know ScreenFlow or whatever it is on our computer, and then we edited ourselves. We there are birds chirping in the background. You know what I'm saying? Like we're in the middle of a Bali rice field. You know, it's it was. So definitely version 2.0, way better, more put together slides in a, cry, a quiet sound recorded area. But first version was just like, get it out there and help people yeah. because, and we still do that to this day with every new course we do. We put it out there, we put a hundred people through it. And then at the end of hundred people, you really get an idea for what did you miss in that course? How can you add to it to make it better? You know, at the end of last year, we launched Jumpstart, which was we, we've always avoided beginner content. We've always stayed very advanced, but we had so many people buying our courses that weren't even ready for that content because they had never even run their first campaign, but they would buy and they'd be like, well, I heard you were the person to get training from. And I'd be like, it's a little advanced for your skill level right now. So we put together Jumpstart, right? At the end of last year, we ran a hundred people through it and was like, wow, we really need to revamp that course because while it taught them core campaigns, it didn't teach them the value of those campaigns and how to sell those campaigns so that way they could go get a job. They just thought, oh, I learned three campaigns, which isn't enough to go get a job. But like, they're the foundational campaigns we use to run ad skills now at a million dollar business that we ran in the very beginning when we were just, you know, earning $10,000, you know, and yeah. they're the same campaigns that we teach, but they didn't have the belief in it. So then we had to revamp the course to teach them not just what the campaigns are and how to do them, but the value of the campaign, you know? Yeah. So, right. and, so every course we launch goes through that same process, even still today from four years ago. I love that. I love that. And I think we're going to unpack some of that in these future rounds. So let's, let's move into round number two. And in round number two, we're going to talk about getting your first customers because of the organic way you've done this. I want to break down some of these specific things. So round number two, getting your first customers. Um, in your story, you talk about, uh, so there's a few pieces of your story and there's a few pieces I already know. Justin, I know had an internship or something with Russell Brunson. There was some connection there. So I want to get to the, it seemed like from your story, the, was it Rich Sheffrin? who you ran yeah. ads for, who was it? That there seemed to be like the tipping point that led to like a bunch of things coming. So let's talk about how did you get that first customer, that first opportunity? Because everyone watching right now is thinking, I just need that first bite. How did you get that first bite? Not, not everyone's gonna like to hear this. So we're, we are always with the mindset of value first, opportunity second. Um, so we know if we put out as much good intention and value first, the opportunity for reward will show up. Um, and so with Russell, for example, and we we're talking 2007 here, I was a school teacher back then and Justin was just trying to figure out how to, how to have an online business. Yeah. And oh, I want to say even 2006, probably now that I think about it, um, Russell had posted in, in a forum, I, I need an intern. Now we live in Florida, Russell's in Idaho. And Justin, while I'm teaching full time at an inner city school, calls Russell, calls his affiliate manager, call everyone on his team that he can find digitally online back in 2006 and says, I want the internship position. And so because of that, he gets the internship position, but now we have to figure out like, we can't move to Idaho for this internship. And so he ends up going out there, works for free for 30 days. We literally used our tax refund that year to pay for his one month rental out there and his groceries, because it was an unpaid internship at that, you know, like he had to go work out there for 30 days. Um, and that's how he did it, like literally 30 days of work. But because he was there and giving his time, Russell did the reverse, right? Russell then gave back. Here's, you know, Justin had his own small website that he was building back then. And Russell would just give him little pointers, you know, put an opt-in page here, change your price here, put this copy here, you know, just, just small tweaks. But in the process at the end of 30 days, Justin had turned our website that really was making maybe a hundred dollars, um, into a business that was paying us a couple thousand. Right. Wow. And then we just continued slow increments. But a part of that internship is Justin's job while in that internship was to go through Russell's library of 
training. Mm -hmm. And so just that's sort of where Justin got a lot of the foundational knowledge he needed to not only grow an internet business, but paid ads. And so from that, he got foundational knowledge. We started building, you know, we flipped and flopped through different, we even did website flipping for a while um, Mm -hmm. as we learned in the industry, right? And the same thing happened. Like we had built up a business. We actually sold that business to Russell. And then at the end of that, we were like, well, what are we going to do now? And so we started with the same thought. And so he messaged Rich and Tom Beal is is who he actually messaged, um, who was working with Rich at the time was like, hey, do you need an ad buyer? I'd love to, I have a couple of ideas for campaigns. I'd love to do them, no cost. I would just like the case study. Uh, And so that's what we did. We worked, we did a campaign for him for free. Just one of the case studies so that way we could launch sort of our next thing, which I don't even remember what was at the time. And um, Justin ran campaigns in and just Rich kept coming back like, hey, can you run that again? Can you run that again? And Justin was like, you know, I could just do this for you full time and I'll just try a bunch of different things across different networks. And Rich was like, do that. Um, <laughs> and so that's how we became Rich Sheffrin's ad buyers, right? And so Justin did that for a good while. And then Rich turned that into uh, the traffic strategist where we were just sharing to his business growth systems people, um, audience or customers, what we were doing to help Rich in the paid ad area, which that's sort of what built Justin, you know? So I would tell people like, you just have to put your value out there, whether you're doing something for free or you're doing it for something, what you believe is less than what you should earn. Um, when you put that out there and just do good work, the opportunities fall into place behind it. And that's, that's what we just believed in from the get go. And that's what we followed through with. So the very first customer came out of both times, just doing work for free first. I don't understand if everyone who's listening right now gets <laughs> like, boom, right? right? So many of you are out there chasing, pay me, pay me, pay me, money, money, money. And that's not how it's done. If you can get out there and get in front. Here's the thing. Sure, it worked out perfectly for Justin on the first go with Russell, right? But what if it didn't? What if he had done that? and gone for 30 days and Russell didn't give back the way he did and things didn't take off. You have to imagine what's the worst case scenario that would have happened in that case. I would still be a school teacher right now, probably. (laughs) Right. Well, or, or Justin would have simply gone and done something like that again with someone else with the value driven statistically speaking at some point this would pay off because this is what I've done in my life too. You know, people ask me all the time, Anik, how are you business partners with Robert Kiyosaki, Bob Proctor? You know, how are you in the doors of Damon, John and all? Because when I show up in front of them, I don't ask, hey, can we be business partners? (laughs) I ask, what are you doing right now that I can contribute to? How can I help you with what you're interested in and what's really inspiring you right now? And it's crazy because you know what? I see it in their eyes when I ask these questions. They'll look at me and go, huh? I'm like, yeah, what's important to you? How can I support what you're doing? And they get confused. They get dumbfounded because they're not used to that. They're used to constantly people chasing around asking them, And it's common human nature that when you deliver for someone, it's just reciprocity. They feel that they should deliver to you. Eight or nine out of 10 people are pretty good people. And they're going to want to give back. I can't tell you how many times I have done this for people. Where someone's come and done something good for me and I will deliver for them in ways they couldn't have even imagined. So please take that away if you're listening right now. That's such a powerful thing. Get in front of. Now, the other thing I want to unpack is. Justin's not shy of making suggestions and capitalizing on the opportunity, which is huge too. So you can't just show up and then sit idly and quietly and wait for someone else to do. I love the part where, you know, Justin's like, Hey, uh, I could just do this for you, you know, and do this, 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 this sign on the dotted line here. So when the time is right, you got to also know to turn this opportunity into, into revenue. Um, really powerful. So, so Shauna, so, okay. So you get now, that's the other thing is we have to understand a concept of tipping point. He got Rich Sheffrin, and now Rich Sheffrin is happy with him. That's going to lead to us. That's a tipping point. Other people are going to find out. Now you got a name you can drop, and now that name's going to refer you people, and then you're going to be in a situation where, like Shauna said, they were making millions but miserable. <laughs> right? Like it was just like so much happening. So Shauna, from there, let's go talk about Justin starts to post on his personal Facebook page. He's talking about his life, talking about what he's doing. Did he? did he just start to attract the right people or did he actively go out there and say, okay, I want to build an audience. I'm going to like and friend this person, that person, this person who are in the ad world. 
Well, I think if you're really smart on social, you're, you're not just putting out everything like what you cooked that day or, you know, where you're traveling to, but you have to think about what would your audience want. And so this goes into a lot of market research that we teach now. And I'm, I'm not sure we fully intentionally did it in the very beginning, but I think over time, as you learn more about building an audience and growing a business and just build, like just speaking to people socially, it's not about what am I doing? It's what do you want to hear about what I'm doing? Mm. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Absolutely. Because like you have to set forth, like a lot of people follow, especially in the last four years, a lot of people that have started following us was because we had this sort of freedom, nomadic business lifestyle and that we had built a business we loved that gave us the free time to homeschool our kids and travel the world. And so if we weren't posting about those things, we wouldn't have an audience for those things. You know, and so I think it's a lot about showing behind the scenes of, you know, the good stuff and the bad stuff. Like when your your kids are crying because you guys can't just figure out fractions together, you know, <laughs> so you have to share the real life hard times, but then share how you overcame them. And so just in doing that, like sharing our real life experiences, with people, I think that's what makes people want to stay around to our social profiles just because we're not just only sharing the good stuff on social. We're trying to share with you like, hey. Life isn't like even at a million dollar business, like, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to complain about our business at all, but it is still challenging to grow from a million dollars to $10 million, you know, mm, and you very, still have yeah. bad days where you're just like, oh, I'm not even sure, you know? And, and so when that happens, you have to share how you overcame that mm. because other people are going to hit those milestones too. And that I feel is what Justin does so well in social. And he's a much better writer than I am, right? He, he is very much a writer more than he is anything else. So he takes the time to think through like, what is the messaging I want to share? What's the lesson I want people to get out of this? And he just shares open and honestly. And, and I think that's what people are attracted to is you know, his audience now is made up of, you know, people like you that run huge businesses and also freelancers that are just getting their first start, you know, mm -hmm. but they all have different aspirations because he's sharing on just real life experiences. It's not on one thing. But the other thing is, so I can think the question I was asking more is, so he started posting this content, but it's not like Justin had some strategy where he went and joined groups and started friending certain types of people to get their attention. Or did he, was he, what, what did he inspire this audience somehow? Was it thought out or did he just start posting and then people found him somehow? Uh, that's a great question. I think it's a little bit of both. I think he does just share open and honestly, but I think it is about making the right connection. So like when you're speaking at an event, um, making sure that he's actually accepting that audience and speaking to that, like his social profile also relates to, so that way when people see him speak, they go to his, his profile and they're like, oh, he talks about things I'm interested in, hmm. you know? And so that, it is important to think about that. And I wouldn't say we joined groups. I would say more, um, it was going to events and networking in the, in the traditional sense, not just networking digitally. Yeah. So no, I got that. Perfect. Okay. So let's then fast forward. So there's the agency. We know how we kind of understand now how the agency took off. There was a lot of get out, step out, get in front of someone, deliver a ton of value that opens up doors, seize the day when those doors open, find that one client and all it takes is one and boom, you can take off from there. Start relaying that information onto this Facebook platform and start talking and informing and, and being open and vulnerable and sharing. And then all of a sudden you start to get the right people following you. He did that for long enough and people start to kind of ask for this course and so all of a sudden you guys are in Bali and you're like, uh, maybe we should do this. And you said a hundred people PayPal. Do you mind me asking like your first course, what was the cost? What, what did, what did you want in order to go film the course? I think it was actually just a hundred dollars. hundred bucks. Our, yeah. It was something that was like, I wasn't going to ask for thousands. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't even know if yeah. there was demand. But I also like didn't want it to be like five bucks. Sure. Like I didn't want a million cause I, you don't really get to gauge the demand off of $5. Everyone has $5 in their pockets, but not everyone has a hundred dollars to frivolously spend or even, you know, $500 to frivolously spend. And so I think if I remember correctly, it was a hundred dollars that they had to PayPal. And it wasn't even a guarantee like that we would continue to support the course going on. Like, Hey, we're just going to share this information with you to get what you get out of it. Um, but it evolved. And so those people with the first hundred dollars are probably still in pro league to this day because that was the offer we made them. Right. <laughs> so crazy. Um, hundred people, hundred dollars, that's 10 grand that yeah. you got off of a Facebook post. And if I'm not mistaken, the course wasn't filmed yet. You've made them pay first. And then you're like, Oh shoot, we'll go film it now. 
Yeah, we had outlined like what we wanted to teach based off of questions we were getting. And, and even like Justin had, like we have ad buying clients. And so like we knew the challenges people, like they would come to us saying like, oh, I hired this other guy and it's just not working. And we dumped all this money into it. And so then when Justin looks at the campaigns, he's like, all right, well, if we make these tweaks, these tweaks, and these tweaks, it should turn it around. And so we would do those. And so we already knew the challenges people were having to get results. Mm. And so we just focused only and literally the media buying masters was more on, um, I think the original name was fearless traffic so that you could just go into it without fear. And I know that a lot of people, when they want to buy ads online, they're scared to, to put that dollar behind it, you know, right. cause it's, you could lose it. But our goal was to help you believe that you weren't going to lose it, that you would get the data you needed and you would get the return over time. That's amazing. So everyone listening, She's laid it out. I mean, th this is the thing that drives me crazy sometimes about entrepreneurship, Shauna. It's like, you've got so many people out there that are chasing, that are trying to do it. And they want like that magic bullet. And they're like, give it to me, give it to me. And I have guests like you on back to back every week. And it's like, Shauna just told you exactly what to do. And, yeah. and statistically speaking, you can't fail doing it the way she said. It, it's just a matter of time. You just have to do more of it. Like you can't yeah. fail build. And I've been, this has been my new thing. Like during this like quarantine, I've been saying like, there's down to three steps now to build a business. It's really simple. <laughs> build an audience, yes. communicate with your audience and sell them stuff. <laughs> like yeah. It's really all there is. So, and that's exactly what's happened in this story. They built an audience and they did it using free Facebook stuff. There's just no, ironically, they didn't spend money to build their audience, even though that's what they teach. They didn't even have to do media buying to build that original audience. Okay. I want to move on into round number three, because what I want to do is I want to, I want to leapfrog. So we went from a hundred dollar course and I want to hear about like, there's been such a huge evolution over the last three years in your offerings. Now that you are pretty much the number one company in the training and certification, even space of the, uh, of, of media buying, of ad buying, I want to know like what you learned, like where are the prices gone? What kind of course offerings do you have? Because uh, I know for a fact, there's been big changes. I was trying to buy into ad skills recently, by the way, Sean, it's a funny side story. And I can't, they won't let me and they're making me book a call. So I was, I was chuckling. I'm like, well, that's a different, that's a different system now. Like they're doing it differently. So I want to learn about that. So let's move into round number three. Round number three, prices, offerings as an industry dominating company. So walk me from the hundred dollar course to where you are today? What do you offer? What are the price points and, and how do you sell it? Okay, before I do that, um, out of our last conversation, I just wanna make sure that I drive this point home is that we don't hold back on social. You will never see us share something on social that isn't in a course already behind a paid gate. Hmm. You know, so a lot of people are scared to differentiate. Well, like I can't show too much out here because then why would they buy it, right? And that's a huge learning factor in just growing your online business and even agencies who follow us um, that, that don't even teach education. But if they just share how to fix a campaign online, even though that's what they do to get paid for, they'll grow a more trustworthy audience in the, in, in the long run. And so I just wanted to make that point was like, we don't hold back. We share everything. Like even if we teach it in a video in our course or in our pro league, like we also share on social because I know that you'll get more help inside of our courses if you trust what I'm sharing with you publicly. So I just want to make that one point is like, we don't differentiate, you know, what gets posted free on social versus what's in paid. So with Ad Seals, when we first started our products, we had that media buying master's course, which was $100 for the first round. And then we relaunched it at $498, if I remember correctly. Um, so then it was just $498 for media buying master's. But then there was still demand from the people that were in the course. And, and so one thing I should say is when we launched the course, we, la we launched a Slack group. Right. And we took it off of Facebook because there was already huge demand or there's already a, a huge supply of Facebook ad training groups, you know. And so to sidestep the competition in our niche at the time, we decided, well, we won't teach beginner stuff. We'll focus on the advanced stuff and that will be our differentiator. And so when we did it, we launched Slack and we sort of used Slack as like, hey, you won't get distracted in Facebook groups. You won't get distracted by your Facebook newsfeed. It's only media buying that you're talking about in here. You can ask a question at any time. It's, it's in Justin's pocket. It's like texting him at any time to help with your campaigns. And that was sort of um, an added bonus to media buying masters when we increased the price is that you would get access to this exclusive group of the first buyers. So there were already conversations happening in there. 
Um, and so that, that sort of helped make media buying masters better than or stronger of an upsell than just our bulletproof courses, which became more specific. So like, well, I don't need a whole course on media buying. I just want to know how to buy better, buy ads better on Facebook, or I just want to know how to buy ads better on Twitter. And so we had this demand for people that wanted us to niche it down into specific networks. And that's where our bulletproof line came from. We started um, Facebook, Twitter, and AdWords. And then we did GDN. So that started what we called our bulletproof bundle. And it was just four in the beginning. And then we had behind each of those, we had media buying masters as the upsell. So those were $49 and people would buy those like hotcakes, right? Yeah. <laughs> they were like $49. This is stupid. This is a no brainer. And that's what you want. You want it to be a no brainer. You want people to think like for $49, I'm going to get my problem solved. Mm. And then, um, and, and that's really what it did. It solved that problem for that network. And then our job in the nurturing sequence of that customer is to show them the value of being able to scale across networks and the value of being able to tie in, you know, a Facebook strategy with a GDN strategy with a, a Google search ad strategy, like to pair those three together and how could you make that work for your business? And so that's what we did in the nurturing behind each of those, just to teach them the value of, of, it's not about one network. You know, it's, it's sort of like investing. You don't just want one stock. You want like a, a basket of stocks. That way, if one goes down, it's sort of going to be balanced by the other one that's going up. And that's the same thing with ad buying. And so that's what we did behind attracting that. So $49. We'd show up and people would be like, that's, you guys aren't charging enough, right? For like yeah. all of 2016 and 17, people said, you guys aren't charging enough. And we were like, yeah, but everyone's happy. Right. And that's where we stuck it at. And then we were like, okay, if we're going to bring on an additional team member to help support in the Slack group or customer support, we really do need to earn enough money to pay another team member. And so then we increased it to $99 just to see if there would be resistance. No resistance. They were still selling just as much at $99 as they were at $49. And so then we we're like, and I'm not saying this happened, you know, in a week or in a month. It's just, we just kept testing over time. And then um, eventually it made it to 249. And at the 249 price point, that became the tipping point of when we had a conversion issue, like when conversions would have good months versus bad months. And that was a sign that, you know, those bulletproof courses shouldn't sell for more than 249. And if they do, then we need to add something to them to make them more valuable. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's sort of the evolution of how we got our initial pricing. And then uh, you, you reach a certain level of earning a certain revenue per month and you're like, well, how do I grow this beyond this? And so we started reaching out to, you know, friends in the industry and asked them, you know, what should we do? And everyone's like, oh, do recurring. Recurring is where you're really missing out. And so in 2000 and I want to say the beginning of 2018, when we rebranded ad skills, we switched to recurring and that, that business model just really didn't fit with us and we tried it and there are still some people that have a recurring subscription and that's totally okay and they choose to keep that subscription and we'll continue to honor it the promise for it but we tried to make better options for them so in 2018 we did we did the recurring 2019 was like why am i paying yearly for this and i was like well we do always update those courses it's not like you buy it once and we never update it again. Like if the network changes, we put new training in there. And if there's a new tactic, we put new training in there. So that, that gave us the justification for the yearly recurring. Um, but we just didn't enjoy the, why am I paying for this? Why am I, can I refund? I don't want to pay, I don't want to pay yearly. And we just found that as a company, we, we would rather just you pay once and stick with us so that we can see you grow over time than to have to worry about losing you just because you didn't want to pay a recurring fee. Um, and so we just had to decide, is it worth it for us in the long run to um, continue to sort, support people that only paid us one time in the past? And so we just decided like, we're acquisitions people, we're ad buyers. You know, we, if we're not good at acquisition, we shouldn't be teaching what we teach, right? And so we just focused, all of our ad skill systems are on acquisition, bringing in new people that want to be advanced ad buyers. And that supports the growth of everyone that has only paid us one time. And so anyone that's on a recurring subscription, we do have like, um, we did our best to make it. We want you to stop paying recurring, right? And so <laughs> <laughs> please don't, don't think I don't want to take your money. Um, but I also 
don't want you to lose access to your course, right? So when we made the transition off of recurring, which is why you see the new systems now, we decided, well, when you, when you go into the recurring business model, you're typically going to assume to make four to six months of that recurring or two to three years. So if we kept them on a recurring payment, what do we really want them to pay us over the lifetime? right? So what, we want to earn $1,000 off of each person, $3,000 off of each person. And so that's what you have to decide is what do you want to earn? And then can you charge that up front and give them lifetime access? But when you switch off of recurring, you then have to change your acquisition model because now you have a higher price point because you're trying to get three years of recurring revenue up front. Does that make sense? It makes perfect. Makes okay. Perfect. I know I got really technical yeah. in advance. And no, help. it's great. I, I want that, right? I want everyone to understand how a company evolves, how its product offerings evolve, yeah. how its sales processes evolve. Um, and you've done all of this in a very compressed period of time of three years. So it's like, it's, it's a wealth of knowledge. So yeah, I, what do you want to earn from the customer? What is your ideal? If they're going to stay with you for three years, what are you charging per year and charge that up front and then be, you know, just let go, let the customer enjoy your environment without having to worry about being upsold. And, um, and funny side story, Shauna, I don't know if, if Justin happened to share with you, but this is, I was that person that bought on the Black Friday sale. I didn't log in. I didn't go in at all. Year later, the year later I get rebuild. But the crazy thing is I got rebuild from some funky name. I didn't recognize the name at all. I Googled it. It was like an air compression company or something. I'm like, what the heck is this? Immediately thought, okay, there's some fraud going on. I, I issued a chargeback because I tru- truly had no idea who it was. And I get a message from Justin a few days later. He's like, hey, man, you know, could you not charge me back? And I'm like, yeah, I have no idea. It's you. I, and, and I went ahead and still, yeah, I refunded the second year because I'm looking at my, had nothing to do with you or your service. It was my lack of action on the service. I just didn't do it. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it. Why should I pay again? But you're right. Had you charged me more up front, I would have happily paid it. And then I would have just kept it because I would have said, oh, at some point I will log in. Because here I am years later now saying, oh, I've, you know, I want to get my team member into it. I'm ready. I'm, I'm showing up to buy. It's very, very interesting. Okay, so let's keep going. You, 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 know, you want to charge up front what you think over the three years you'll be making and you changed your processes of how you do that now. Okay, so a couple of points here now that I realize, now that you've sort of repeated it back to me. And it wasn't just what we wanted to be making. It was what was going to be the cost to support the customer. You know, so like there's instructor costs of creating new courses, there's Slack costs as the group grows, we have premium Slack. And and that was actually a growth challenge too. In the beginning, we had free Slack, right? Which meant at a certain point, you no longer get the history of conversations. They stop giving it to you unless you start paying. And so we ended up paying, you know, you pay per person with Slack. And that was like a huge jump. Like, are we willing to pay that cost per person every year for every active member if they're only paying us one time? True. You know? And so you, you have to really know the cost of your business as well. And it's not just, oh, I sell an info product. There are no costs. That's not true. There's new acquisition costs. There's hosting costs, site upgrade costs. You know, if you want to, you know, because we have the pro league in Slack, there's that cost. And so we had to really think about what were our costs going to be over a longer period of time? And then what would that, what would make sense up front? You know, and so that was the first balance that we had to make. And then the second point, um, oh man, I should have written it down. It'll come back to me. Um, current model. Okay. So now that we know what our costs are to acquire and support and fulfill on all the courses that we have, we had to think about We realized last year in 2019, um, we were selling our courses a la carte, which is like individually. You could buy the Facebook course or the Media Buying Masters course, or you could buy the bundle. And our original funnel was one course bundle. um, So it would be like bulletproof Facebook ads is what we would advertise to acquire a customer. And then right behind that, we would have the instant upsell. You get the bundle at a discounted rate, so you don't have to buy the, the courses individually. And then behind that were our master's courses. But in that process, our goal was in building a funnel that converted with paid ads, but we weren't seeing the same results with our customers, right? They were just buying a Facebook ads course and they're like, "Eh, I didn't get the results I wanted. They never bought anything else. But like, that's not what I want out of our ad skills pro league members or out of our ad skills members at all is I want them to become like the new rock stars in the industry. Right. And so I was like, well, what made this person so successful with our curse? courses versus this person. 
And we really dove into customer data to identify like what was it. And so what we identified was everyone that was really crushing it took media buying masters first, right? That was like, cause that teaches you how to fix your failing campaigns. And then you learn how to specialize within a network and within an industry. And so we realized there was sort of like this pathway customers needed to follow in order to achieve a successful result. And so we switched our courses. You could no longer, at the end of last year, we stopped selling them individually. We were like, no, this is going to give us a bad name in the long run. And so it is better for us to make sure the people that can afford it and going through it are going to get the results we want versus just selling them at a lower cost individually and not getting the results we need. You know, and so we really focused, we switched everything. We packaged our courses into like a pathway, I would say. So now like when you sign into agency, so we have two options. We have the beginner option, which is jumpstart. If you've never bought an ad before, if you work in another career, and you just think, oh, I want to work from home, this might be a career path, that's jumpstart. If you've bought ads before or maybe even started freelancing in it, agency is the path you want because it takes you through how to fix failing campaigns, teaches you how to specialize into a niche, and then how to build an agency around it. You know, and so we started to create this path so that way at the end of it, we had better case studies of delivering results. Because in the long term, especially if we're not charging recurring revenue, that's what's going to help us acquire new people. You know, and that's how our whole model shifted. And we took all of 2019 to make that shift of, hey guys, last chance, no more recurring. It's going to be one-time payment going forward. But if you want to hop in early, this is your one-time payment. And so we, we helped all of our people that were on recurring subscriptions make the jump. That way new people coming in just only saw one-time payment. And there was no like, wait, could I have gotten a subscription at a lower rate? Um, so that's what we spent 2019 doing is just fixing it. Perfect. That. I, I just love the evolutionary side of the story. I mean, you've also, you've also changed your sales process, right? So it's not like go to adskills.com and just purchase. Um, what's the thought process there? Uh, I don't just want anyone to join anymore. Like a lot of times, especially when you're selling low dollar courses, or even if you're trying to make recurring, it's, it's all about getting a lot of people in and just dealing with churn. What I'm really looking for is I want ad skills to be known as they're the company that spits out advanced ad buyers. And that's how we got you to come back to us. And that's how we dominated your social feed is because all yep. of our focus is not on how does ad skills grow as a company. Our focus is on how do we make epic ad buyers at the end of the day that then tell people about how we helped them transition. You know, like our instructors are not people we went out and hired. They're our own students. You know, they're, they're people that are buying ads and running their own agencies and we're putting them on stages. We're not trying to, to go on stages. We're just, we're trying to help them evolve. And out of that, we get these massive case studies that then bring new people in the door. And if our focus is only on growing you from a beginner into this epic ad buyer that runs an agency, then you have more of a reason to convert, right? So our sales process now, um, we do, we do want to qualify people a little bit better. We don't just want somebody that's looking for, you know, the, the next tactic that's working on Facebook groups or what tactic is working in Instagram or TikTok. You know, uh, we're not, we're, not, we're thinking more along long-term strategy and scale to help businesses grow over time. And so we're trying to create ad buyers that understand the difference between a tactic and an ad buying strategy. Yeah. Um, no, I, I love it. You're actually being selective with your students. And that is probably the first time I've heard anyone on this podcast say that, which is, you know, price yourself and sales process yourself in a way that actually brings the right people in the door. And it's funny because a lot of what you guys are doing with ad skills, um, I'm trying to do, I just started a couple of months ago with copywriting. It's been a big passion of mine. And I want to, I don't like a lot of the copywriting training out there. I don't believe in it. I've done a lot myself and I feel like the systems are different. So this whole thing. So I decided 2020, I'm actually going to go out and, and, and put my neck out and actually start teaching it and doing it. And one of the things I'm also discovering only two months in is that uh, there can be the lower program, which is like the introduction to people and to the world, but I don't get a lot of kick out of it. What I love is working in more hands-on with the people that have already shown some level of you know, understanding or some level of intellect towards it. And what I'm able to do with someone who's shown me a little bit is in three weeks, I can turn them into like a, like 
like a badass copywriter, like in three weeks versus with a lot of people, it might take me three years, it might take me three months because it, and it's not skill or talent, it's interest, <laughs> it's devotion, yeah. it's dedication that they, they are to they the topic. They want career out of it. They want to be a specialist. Yes, in it. And exactly. It's easier to then deliver for them because you're just sharing your expertise and how you would solve those problems yeah. versus trying to take someone from very beginner. And, and, and we didn't for the first three years, like 2020, this year is the first year we're really focusing on helping people come in the door as a complete beginner. And then we, what we did was we found specific ad skill students that we thought would support beginners better. Because I don't want to take the level of our ad skills pro league um, where, and that was a fear of a lot of our um, pro league members was that if we brought in a bunch of beginners, we would diminish the value that happens and the level of skill conversation that happens in pro league. And so like they even have separate pro league, separate Slack groups because we really wanted the beginners to be supported by people we knew could handle with patience, the beginner questions, and then could also just focus on following ad skill systems because if they just follow those, then they'll be ready for advanced conversations in the agency program. And so yeah. that, that was a huge thing. Another thing I wanted to point out with, with our switch and focus on results is we started a certification program in 2019. I want to say early 2018, but we were very selective about that too, because I didn't want you to just be able to buy a certification. You know, I didn't want to be one of those companies where it's like, oh, look, I, you know, I paid $9.98 or I paid whatever. And now I have a certified certification is um, I really wanted to make sure at the end of the certification, somebody really could stand up for ad skills on a stage and deliver the content we believe in. You know, and, and so we were very selective when we started the certification program. But in order to do that, we also had to be very selective in who we let in the door for the certification program, yeah. which is another reason for having the tour process and making sure that when you're signing on, you're getting the right program for your goals. Yeah. No. Oh, amazing. Um, Shauna, this has been such a powerful interview. I am going to just do one little rapid fire question at you which would be our round four. And it's just, I'm curious because you've done so much, right? We've listened to the, the evolution of how you priced your courses, the evolution of how you began the business, the impact of the social side, the posting, the giving, the value driving. Um, you've talked about how you have a Slack group inside of your community that really helps build a community, which differentiates you. have talked about customer selection, sales process that, you know, it's just been so much that we've covered. Okay, so here's round four or rapid fire, whatever. Here we go. And we're going to wrap it up with this question. Three, three plus years, you guys have come from, you know, Justin's media buying for some people to now you are the creme de la creme of media buying training, premium pricing, you know, living the lifestyle you want and everything. Like this is like a dream. This is like a Cinderella story of a business growth. What would you say the number one, just one thing that probably led to the most impact of that happening? Focusing on your customers' results. Love it. Love it. Making sure those customers get results and then the sales process just becomes so much easier. Um, and I'll, I'll go back to a point I said in this interview that was exactly what got me interested in Justin. It was not a sales page. It was not copywriting. It was not an ad. It was because I saw him once and then I saw him in three places and then I saw him in seven and then I saw him in 15 and I was like, what the heck is going on? Why is he everywhere? And the reason that happened is because he was out there delivering value and more and more people were talking about it. So yeah. as simple as that, that was what got the money out of my, that plus a good Black Friday sale <laughs> got money out of my pocket. But that's all it was. I didn't read the copy. I did never read the page. I just There's did it. So many testimonials like that, actually, of people that are like, I just scrolled to the bottom and clicked buy. Yeah. Uh, and even the tour process, our biggest, our biggest conversion issue is that so many people have gone to a meeting or a mastermind or social media or anything like that. And they're like, just join ad skills. But because we took the option off of our front page and you have to go through the tour for the filter, that's actually one of our greatest conversion downfalls right now is that some people come to us ready to buy, but we also have to protect the community and making sure that, yes, I want you to get a course from us, but I want to make sure it's the right course, which is why we have the tour. Right. So Shauna, it's funny side story. If you, if you look at, if you look at your support system, I'm having a conversation with your support. And I told him, I said, listen, I know Shauna, I know Justin, I just want to buy. I like, can you just tell me the packages? Like, it's all I want to know. Price package, whatever. I'll click a link. I'll buy. I don't need the, the tour. And they're like, well, 
uh, okay, which pack? So she was like, oh, I didn't know that. Which package do you want? I'm like, I don't know what packages there are. Just tell me. She's like, oh, you're better off getting on the tour. I'm like, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> right, like- <laughs> Two different sides of things. Our, our customer support team, we tell them like, so it's hard to teach customer support sales, right? Oh, of and it's course. Hard to get salespeople to to want to deal with customer support, and so we just tell our customer support team, like, hey, if it's a question about packaging, just forward the question over to the sales team; they'll handle it. Which yeah. of course then says, hey, let's hop on a call, right? <laughs> but I would tell you, like, we we do have three packages. I'll run it down for you. We have Jumpstart, which is for complete beginners. I wouldn't recommend that. We have agency for people that want to either be a solo freelancer or build their own agency. And then we have teams, which helps business owners like you um, train their own in-house media buyers. But what we do with the teams packages, we remove any education related to building your own agency. Yeah. But it's, it's the same track of education as our agency team, except for at the end of it, where we teach agency, we take that out. Got it. Um, Got so it. those are our three packages. And, and that's why we get people on a call just to help figure out what are your goals sure. and what is your business like and how can Oh, we- no, I, I love it. I, I, I was never upset about it. For me, the challenge is just like getting something on my calendar, but I was chuckling and I'm like, I get it. Like I, I can appreciate yeah. this. Um, I see the change and, and I can see what they're doing. So really powerful. Focus on the customer, focus on the results. Everything else comes. Shauna, where can people get a hold of you? Where can people follow your work, Justin's work, ad skills work, throw some URLs out. Do you have content, podcasts, whatever, please. I'm sure our listeners are going to want to follow. Awesome. So at any time, you can always go to ad skills. You can find both Justin and I on social anytime. We never make anything private. I would say the thing we're trying to help people with most is growing our employer network which means if you are a business owner, then you can actually listen to all of our students get interviewed on our Ad Skills Pros podcast um, and then fill out like what you did, um, fill out the matchmaker form and we actually pair you with ad buyers that meet your, meet your budget goals, your business goals. And so I would say, find us at adskills.com if you wanna hear more about our case studies and things we our ad buyers are doing, listen to Ad, ad Skills Pros and that's adskills.pro. Love it. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to continue working with ad skills. I'm, I'm excited to continue hiring from your pool. It, it was by far the first place I went to. Um, we're growing and we're looking. So Shauna, keep us in mind. Give us the best of the best. Think of us first before Absolutely. everybody else. That would be my request. Um, having said that, hats off to you, to your family, to Justin. Stay safe. Thanks for coming on and doing this interview. It has been absolutely awesome, very inspiring, and basically a blueprint for anyone in any space, in any niche, to become the premium training company in that space. It's a matter of, will you do it? (laughs) Yeah, it does take a lot of work and dedication. Yeah, are you gonna do it? That's gonna be the only differentiator. So there you go, fighting entrepreneurs. Go out there and make it happen. Now listen, remember, onicpodcast.com. Get in there. Leave me a review. Give us some five stars. Throw us some love. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment below. Shauna took time out of her life, her schedule to do this for you. Give her a shout out at the comments below. Hit subscribe. Hit the thumbs up icon. You know what to do. Hit the bell icon as well. This is awesome. Go out there. Fight for your dreams. As I always say, when life pushes you, stand straight. Smile and push it the heck back. And just because we're on lockdown doesn't mean you get a chance to be lazy. You get to go out there and fight for your dreams. You get a chance to go out there and build your audience. Come on. We've had multiple speakers on Back to Back talk about how to build an audience. This is the perfect time to do it. So there you go, fighting entrepreneurs. Until next time, go out there, fight for your dreams. This is Onyx and All signing off. Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx and